Hey guys, Robert here, writer and editor of End of All Hope. I'm releasing this episode early so that I can plug our newly launched Patreon page. If you would like to donate to help us out, you can visit www.patreon.com slash 7lamb. That's the number 7 and lamb, L-A-M-B. Every amount helps. We spend a lot of time and money creating podcasts here at 7 Lamb Productions. The money donated goes to sound effects, music, casting, actors, software, equipment, and so on. And because we just launched, we're running a promotion. For the entire month of September, all of our bonus content on Patreon will be accessible by donating a dollar. That's one dollar and you can access everything from more podcasts to viewable scripts to bloopers and other such content. But that's only for the month of September. So check us out. Also, any money we make for the month of September will be donated to Hurricane Harvey Relief. So if you would like to donate more, you're certainly welcome to. Once again, that's www.patreon.com slash 7lamb, the number 7, L-A-M-B. And everything for the month of September is $1. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the next episode of End of All Hope. Seven Lamb Productions presents to you End of All Hope Episode 12 Quarantined I couldn't believe we were alive. Creatures had chased us through the woods. I thought for sure our tumble down the hill was the end of the road for us. That is until the three military men came to our rescue. They were out patrolling the area when they stumbled upon us in our loud screams. They had killed the creatures that gave us chase. These creatures were different than the other ones that attacked us earlier. More human-like. They weren't the same aliens that had emerged from the rocks which just added more questions about exactly what was going on. Now we were in a jeep, heading toward a small town called Wanami, where a military outpost was set up. It's a good thing we were passing through. Otherwise, each one of you would have been alien chow. You do realize that, right? We said thanks. Man, I swear to God, if they're bitten... We aren't. We should have stripped them. We should have fucking stripped them. The three military men were Griff... Johnson and Ambridge. Griff drove the jeep, and Johnson and Ambridge kept their focus on us. They mentioned bites. What about bites? Is this an alien invasion or a zombie one? Don't be ridiculous, Jay. It's not that ridiculous. Have you seen those creatures before? No. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We should have definitely stripped them down. What if they turn? Fucking relax, Johnson. Keep it in your pants. What the hell does that mean? I don't give a shit that there are girls. I can see tits anytime I want. I have a girlfriend, man. Do you? Fuck you, dude. She's with her parents in York. I don't think he meant it that way. He's saying she's fucking dead. And if you say it again, I swear- Relax, idiot. I meant she probably wasn't your girlfriend to begin with. What's with the bites? It's believed that some bites may be... Uh... They may be... Ambridge. What? Not now. Griff, you're such a fucking fag. Tell him. Tell him what the hell's going on. Who cares? We're supposed to relieve the panic, not add to it. The captain might be pissed we're leaving our post. I called it in. He's sending out another patrol. He told me to bring in the other survivors. And count the dead creatures, right? There were 15 of those fuckers. 16. Whatever. That's the most we've ever dealt with at once. Spreading fast. We could see the town in the distance. Huge lights brighten the area. 
The sound of cars and people grew louder. Did you... did you rescue anyone else? Around here? No. Rescue missions aren't our job. We were only bringing you back because we were told to keep the surrounding area clear. You just happened to lead the Shriekers right to us. Shriekers? That's what they're called? What they're called? I don't think they have actual names. That's what we call them. Those fuckers are loud. And fast. You really haven't seen those yet? No. They're nasty. Don't let them get a hold of you. Don't let them get a hold of you? Don't let any of those goddamn creatures get a hold of you. The Thrashers are the ones that spread the damn thing. Enough, guys. Enough. Shit. We rode in silence a bit as we closed in on the recently built military outpost. Huge tents were set up. We drove through the town, down Main Street, weaving between parked cars and crates of equipment. That fucker better not be bit. Johnson pointed his gun towards Mark, who was still unconscious. He's not. Obviously he's not. He would have turned by now. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, Ambridge. <laughs> yeah, Ambridge, you dumbass. We don't know how long it takes to turn. You too, Johnson. You guys are getting on my goddamn nerves. Relax, man. The car slowed as we pulled into the parking lot of the bike shop. They let us out of the vehicle. Ambridge stood six feet tall and had a medium build. His five o'clock shadow and tired eyes took on a more sorrowful appearance with the uneven casting of work lights that brightened the area. It had to be nearly four in the morning. Griff wore a watch, but I didn't bother asking him the time. Hey, um, what time is it? Time for you guys to get moving. That's exactly what I thought he'd say. Griff and Johnson led us toward the police station, which was across the street. Outside, there had been plenty of civilians sitting around and talking. I'm gonna go talk to Cap. Take him to the station. Johnson led the way as Ambridge and I dragged Mark's limp body. Serena and Jade followed closely behind. We didn't have our packs anymore. We lost them on our tumble and weren't allowed to go back for them when Griffin and his buddies arrived. They also confiscated our weapons, which I fought, but lost. lot of commotion within the small town. How does this not attract those things? We're not scared of them. Let them come. We'll blast them to hell. We walked up to a small tent that was sectioned off from the rest of the police station parking lot. What the hell is this? Who are they? Drop-offs. Whoa there, stop. What the hell? Townsfolk? We found them outside on a perimeter check. Cap gave the go-ahead to bring them in. Well, new protocols just went into effect, and now we have a screening process that starts here. When did this happen? An hour ago. Then fucking screen them. Screening? What's wrong with this one? We were in a car accident. He bumped his head. Has he been bitten? Have any of you been bitten? No. I'll give you one more chance to answer honestly. That is honestly. None of us have been bitten. Well then, this one is going to the med bay. The rest of you this way. Wait, wait, wait. We're not leaving Mark. As of right now you are. He needs medical attention, and you are going through a screening test. You're not going to take... Ava, don't. He'll be fine, really. Now please, this way. The women calling the shots led us around the side of the tent and past two rows of hanging tarps. One at a time. I saw Johnson and Ambridge taking Mark away, out of sight. This fucker better not wake up and bite me. 
Let's go. We don't have all night. The woman ushered us through. I went between the rows of tarps. Strip. After a few minutes of contemplation, I took off my socks. Shoes. Keep going. Shirt. Shorts. You can stop after that. I didn't like this. They had taken Mark away. And now I was stripping so they could expect my body. When did this become a thing? What were these bites that they were talking about? Were the aliens spreading some kind of virus? Ambridge mentioned turning. Was Jay's zombie quip a possibility? Let's go. I removed my shirt and shorts. The woman walked around me, inspecting my body. What's this? She pointed at my leg, where there were a number of scratches and bruises. It's from the car accident. And this? Same. She donned a pair of surgical gloves and poked the bruised areas. Hmm. Car accident? Yes. Emerson! A man with a clean-shaven face and thick rim glasses walked around the side of the tarps. He walked up to me. Instinct told me to cover myself, so I did as best I could, with just my hands. Relax. What is it, Jane? She says car accident. This man, Emerson, bent down and inspected my scratches, my bruises. Well... I don't think it's anything to be alarmed about. You were in a car accident? Yes, and so were the people with me. Would you like us to address this? We have medical supplies here in this. Th- this should be stitched up. I'm fine. We really should stitch this. I'm fine. Emerson and Jane shared a concerned glance before Emerson nodded. Let her through. Go. I dressed and walked to the end of the hanging tarps, where I was greeted by a man with a huge row of green tape. He wrapped the tape around my bicep. Keep this on. It means you're golden. Got it? I nodded and headed into the sectioned off area of the parking lot. There were hundreds of people surrounding the police station. Angie? Angie! I turned around to see an old man with a bushy beard and bags under his eyes. Oh, oh, I I thought you were Angie. I'm sorry. The old man shambled away. I saw a policeman standing by the front steps of the station. He was thin and lanky and had a scraggly mustache that was jet black. I walked over to him. Excuse me. Sorry, miss. You have to stay in this area. His name tag read, Officer Reynolds. No, I was just wondering if you could tell me exactly what's going on. This area was picked as an outpost because several cities and towns around here have been subject to, let's say, attacks. The sheriff will be out shortly to address everybody. You said that hours ago. Margaret, please. There's a lot going on at the moment. If you could... Could what? You're keeping us locked in here like cattle. No one's locked in. They won't let us leave. Hell, they even branded us. She held up her arm and motioned at the green tape. It's for everyone's safety. I made my way back to the tarps just as Jay came through. He was quickly branded with green tape. What's this for? Jay! What the hell is all this? They're keeping everyone here. Apparently, the sheriff is going to speak to the public soon. Although, that may be a lie. Ambridge mentioned turning. I know. Could this be... I mean, tell me this isn't some kind of zombie outbreak. Those things. Those things that came after us in the gas station. They looked like people. Misshapen and weird, but 
still human-like. They mentioned shriekers and thrashers. There's got to be more than one type. So those things spreading the virus, those are the ones from the asteroids? I don't know, Jay. Just then Serena passed through and got her branding. I asked them if they saw Riley. And? They didn't. We stood in silence a moment before I led Jay and Serena to a wooden bench that was unoccupied. Well, what do we do now? Yeah, I don't think they're going to let us out anytime soon. They must be worried about this thing spreading. I agree. Some lady yelled at Officer Reynolds over there about being kept here for hours. We're being quarantined. Maybe, maybe Riley's here. I don't think so. I want to look. Really? Please, help me look. You guys go. I'm going to talk to some of these people. See if anyone can clue me in on what's going on here. Jay nodded as he and Serena walked through the crowd. I walked around and talked to several people. Most didn't know what was going on, and several people said that they'd been in the sectioned off area for five or even six hours. They were told to get some sleep, but had no blankets or pillows to comfort them on the hard ground. One old lady went on an Ebola rant that lasted 20 minutes. An hour passed and nothing new. If they were worried about an outbreak, who knows how long they would keep us here. We couldn't stay. I needed to get to Mark and get the hell out of here. We didn't find him. Serena and Jay walked up behind me. I, I, I think we're stuck here. A lot of people are spooked, and I think the same goes for the military. Hey, is that Ambridge? Looks like him. I rushed to the end of the parking lot. Whoa, where do you think you're going? No one's allowed to leave the station. I just want to talk to that man. Sorry, can't let anyone leave. Strict orders. Come on. Ambridge! Ambridge! He saw me and jogged over. Yeah? What's going on? She wants to talk to you. That's fine. Did they say anything about Mark? Your friend? Yeah, it seems like he'll be fine. Did he come too? I don't know. We just dropped him off. Will they bring him here? I don't know. Sorry. No one really telling us anything, you know? Just do what I'm told. Ambridge, let's go. I'm coming. How long will they keep us here? Like I said, they don't tell us anything, but if they think it's a good idea, it's probably for everyone's safety. They have their reasons. Right. I just... I have somewhere I need to be. I understand. I'm sure everything will be sorted out shortly. Ambridge! Sorry, going back out. You take care. Okay. Hey, you know my name, but I didn't ask. Ava. Ava. Nice to meet you, Ava. Thank you again. We would have... We would have died. You're welcome. Ambridge, you fucked hard. Come on. Take care. He jogged off. I started my way back to Jay and Serena when I overheard two military men talking. Emerson, the man who inspected us, walked over to them. Any word? Nothing. I sent more men out. Let's see what they report. Well, if she doesn't show up, what then? We wait for orders. Where's the creature? 
A recreation center on the other side of the creek. I don't like keeping it around. And that people have been exposed? The same place. They, they said Dr. Bennett was on her way two hours ago. Hopefully all is well. Whether she got held up or she was attacked. Do you know what she looks like? No. Never met her. Are we sure she wasn't here when we arrived? Highly doubtful. She would have came forward. Well, transmissions are down right now. It's possible she's trying to make contact but can't get through. I'm not sure I was in my right mind, but I, I felt the urge to try. I bit my tongue, but not hard enough. Then we're fucked. I say we destroy the things, infected and that creature. We can't do that. There's no way of knowing if she'll ever make it. Let's face it. A lot is going down, and it isn't going to get better. She could be dead. She could be stalled. I thought of the white van, the two armored vehicles. Could it be? Could that have been? Give her one more hour. She had escorts. If she were attacked, we would... Well, maybe if your screening process was faster and not as confining. I don't know what compelled me to speak, but I did. They all turned their gaze towards me. Emerson pointed at me and wagged his finger. You, you're Dr. Catherine Bennett, Chief Science Officer? I composed myself and crossed my arms. That's right. Now, can you get me the hell out of here? End of All Hope Written by Robert M. Lamb Edited by Seth York, Adam Jetmore, and Robert M. Lamb Starring Hope Ennis as Ava Nick Engelhardt as Mark Adam Jetmore as Jay Co-starring Jenny Bailey, Justin Stewart, Jay Marone, Chris Cartesano, Amber Simpson, Brian Messick, Mike Lenhart Christopher Atkinson, John Lassabeth, Kyle Appleyard, Maria Baumgartner, Kaylin Boyd, Jack Austin, Seth York, Jonathan Moss, Amy LeRae, April Cadmus Marsh, Daniel Brown, Ashley York, Nick Ott, Mitchell Beck, Jose Caraballo, and Robert M. Lamb. Music provided by Incompetech.com and Dylan Mixer at dylanmixercomposer.bandcamp.com If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review on iTunes. Visit www.7lamb.com for more podcasts such as this one. This has been a Seven Lamb production.